Hi, it's Hope and welcome to the video. I'm going to apologize if it doesn't look like I'm staring into the camera because I'm not. I am just admiring the new piercing. Um, this is the piercings booktube debut. Um, I literally got it this morning as I'm film filming this. Um, but this, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, is going to be my June wrap up, which it is currently July. So obviously we need to do that wrap up. Um, so we'll go first through the stats and then we'll talk about the books that I read. I will go into various details of the book, uh, depending on how much I want to talk about them. Uh, so let's just jump in right with the stats. So I'm looking over here because I have my laptop with the stats so that I'm saying the right things. So in June, I read 12 books, which ended up being 4,892 pages. The average star rating was a 4.41. I enjoyed a lot of the books that I read. For the genres, I read one dark romance, one erotic, two fantasy, three fantasy romance, one graphic novel, one paranormal, and three romances. The formats were eight ebooks, two mix, which means like ebook and audiobook or physical book and audiobook um and two physical and the eight like the age ranges slash audiences were seven adults three new adults and two YA so I definitely stuck to more adult books in June and so now let's just talk about what I did read so the first book I'm going to talk about I'm just going to switch over here so I can put the book covers over here uh but the first book is Offside by Avery Keelan which is the first book in I believe it's called the Rules of the game. I believe the title of the series is on the cover here, um, but I'm too lazy to look it up right now. But this is a like new adult hockey romance. So basically we are following uh, Bailey who basically she ends up getting dumped on her 21st birthday and to kind of cheer herself up she ends up going uh, clubbing with um, a couple of her like friends from her like journalism class I believe and there she meets Chase who is a hockey player who is on the opposing team to, like who is on like a rival team to her ex's like her ex was a hockey player and her brother is a hockey player and they play on the same team and Chase is on kind of like like Bailey schools like rival team um but then Bailey and Chase kind of start getting to know each other and realize just because of like their school's teams having rivalries and like Chase and like Bailey's ex and brother kind of have a rivalry doesn't mean that Chase and Bailey can't hang out and maybe develop those feelings for each other and I really like this Chase is honestly kind of up, up there in like now book boyfriends I love him um he is so sweet and caring but yet has a like wild side of sorts he is kind of your stereotypical like fuck boy before he meets Bailey he like slept around with I don't even think he could name how many women um versus Bailey had only had her previous relationship so there's there's that kind of figuring out of what their relationship is and what it means for both of them and it was just a really good story that I enjoyed um I buddy read this with some friends although kind of towards the end we kind of fizzled off talking about it but I still loved it I gave it five stars I absolutely loved it I will probably at some point want to buy a physical copy of this and I also Honestly, literally, tonight as I'm filming this, might start the second book in the series because it just came out a couple days ago, so I might start that, maybe. I'm not too sure. The next three books I'm going to talk about uh, together because it's an entire series, and so that is Blood Crown, War Crown, and Immortal Crown by Elizabeth Brown and Tori Heat. I gave Blood Crown and War Crown four stars, and then I gave Immortal Crown 3.5 stars. So this basically is a like um, adult paranormal romance where 
we are following Ashira, who is a succubus queen, and she has recently overthrown the um, like ruler of this one country, and has become the first queen of this of this country of honestly every country within the like the world that we know. Um, and so because she's now queen and she's tra changing some of the like laws and all that she needs to meet with the other rulers of like the other countries within this world and as she kind of meets some of them she realizes that they are her mates because in this world succubuses have multiple mates and it is very very smutty there is smut in every chapter of every single one of these books i believe um and by the end of this series ashira ends up with seven eight eight mates of varying paranormal species like there's a incubus a vampire a fae an angel a god two shifters and a witch i'm missing one oh no two of them are shifters so yeah eight in total but two of the same kind um <laughs> but it I really enjoy these um Blood Crown and War Crown were rereads for me but I read Immortal Crown for the first time and I do still really enjoy this the story because it kind of shows I guess what it takes to be in such a giant polyamorous relationship with a bunch of people and it is very queer pretty much everybody is queer in some way shape or form but overall they are good books they are very quick and easy to read i read like all three of them within like four days i want to say like four maybe five days something like that so they were really quick reads and overall like they are very quick and easy to read and if you want something smutty read this the next book i finished in june i didn't start it in june i started it in um april but i finished it in june so we're counting it for june is Hideaway by Penelope Douglas, which is the second book in the Devil's Night series, which is one of my favorite series of all time. Uh, but basically in this, we are following Kai and Banks, and um, basically each of the books in this series follows a different couple where the guys are all friends. Um, and so Kai is a guy from the friend group, and Banks is his love interest who has other ties to the series, to like other characters too. But Basically, we are following Kai and Banks and their story as, how do I say this without spoiling the end of the first book? But basically, like, Kai ends up having to make, like, a contract with Banks's father, and thus Banks gets kind of wrapped up with Kai and kind of becomes part of this deal of sorts, and it is a dark romance, um, and I really like this series. I love this book because it is told in two points of time the present timeline and i believe it's five years in the past when kai and banks first met on devil's night which is um october 30th the day before halloween and then now we are obviously five years later and like they both remember that night vividly they both still like each other from having that one night um but now they're adults um, their lives have changed and so it's re-meeting under other circumstances and kind of that fight of the what they currently are and that wanting to be what they used to be um, used to be for one night um, and all of that and I love the Devil's Night series I honestly don't understand why it took me two months to read this I think it was just because I didn't want it to be over with um, or at least that's what I'm telling myself the next book is Cherish by Tracy Wolf, which is the sixth and final book in the Crave series. I was a co-host for the Crave Along, so I kind of had to read this. And also, it came out the end of May, so of course I had to read it in June. And this is the, as I said, the sixth book in the Crave series. The Crave series is basically a YA paranormal, which in the first book, Crave, which I actually have right here. Um, basically, we follow Grace, who after her parents pass away... She ends up having to move to a boarding school in rural Alaska that is ran by her uncle, and little does Grace know that there are 
like it's a school for paranormal creatures and that she herself uh, may be slightly paranormal. And so this is the final book in that series. I obviously can't say anything about this besides I really enjoyed it and I do like where it ended. It left with a very open ending because there is going to be a spinoff series, um, Sweet Vengeance, which is the first book in the Calder Academy series. I believe that's the what the series is called. Um, and so I'm excited for that and I am excited where this left off to kind of pick up on that, but it also kind of kept its own like well-contained ending, which I did really like. And I love just these characters so much. Um, so yeah. The next book is Gravity by Tal Bauer and this is a MM hockey romance. So this basically we are following Bryce and Hunter and they end up having to go to Vegas for like the all-star is it the all-star like talent stuff? It's a fucking hockey thing that happens. I literally am brain farting on what it actually is. They kind of like start playing together with like during that time and they realize they play really well together um on the ice and then so they kind of start getting along off the ice for that like weekend that they're there and then um Bryce ends up kissing Hunter and that kind of ruins the friendship that they had and they both start performing extremely horrible off the like on the ice from like as their separate teams so then Hunter ends up getting traded to Montreal, which is the team that Bryce plays for, and they go from there and kind of, it is just a very sweet story of, I guess, realizing who you are and also kind of the whole dynamic of being queer in sports, but it talks about that type of thing and I did enjoy that and this does also, like, show that like they start off as friends and it leads to more and it shows that very natural progression which I like and it overall was just really cute and really sweet and I really liked it it was mostly set in Canada which I love as a Canadian seeing books that take place in Canada um so yeah and I, and I gave that 4.5 stars I also forgot to mention, I think I gave Hideaway five stars and Cherished five stars. I forgot to mention that. Oops. Uh, but I did really like Gravity and I definitely now need to read more of Tal Bauer's books because I read two of his books so far and I gave them both 4.5. So I definitely need to read more of his books. The next book is Laura Olympus Volume 4 by Rachel Smith, which is the fourth book in the Laura Olympus graphic novel series, which is basically a like modern Hades and Persephone retelling. And this was originally published on Webtoons, which is where I read it but it is being bound up into like hardcovers. And so as the hardcovers come out, I'm reading them on Webtoons so that I can count it to my Goodreads goal, if that makes any sense. Um, and this I gave four stars. I really like it. It's basically, as I said, like the modern Hades and Persephone retelling. It takes place at modern Olympus and you have all of your like classic um, Greek gods and goddesses and just, it's great. I really like it. It's very quick to read and very, it's quick excuse me it's quick to read and simple and i liked it so four stars the next book is rules we break by dana isley which is the fifth and final book in the one night series and this is greg and ivy's story so um and this basically so about a year prior greg and ivy kind of started this office romance of sorts um ivy is greg's boss and is an older woman by about 15 years from his age I believe she's 45 and he's 30 and so they had this kind of like friends with benefits arrangement for a couple months and then they stopped because they realized that it was very unprofessional and then now we're about a year later they're both at a conference in Nashville and they decide to just have a fun weekend for Ivy's birthday and it is as muddy as all hell um we have a female dom as Ivy is definitely the one in charge of everything and I love it. Um, but I gave it four stars. I really liked it. It's definitely not my favorite within the series. My favorite I think is still book four and I think it will always be book four. Um, but I did enjoy this. It was very quick to read. It, it's a novella so it was like a hundred and what does my spreadsheet say? A hundred and nine pages according to my spreadsheet. Um, and yeah, it was a very fun read. I think I read it in one afternoon. Um, so yeah. 
The next book is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, which is the second book in the Last Hour series. And this is one of the many books in the Shadowhunters world. But the first book, Chain of Gold, basically we are following, um, there are, like, we're following a young group of shadow hunters who live in London. And basically there are two new shadow hunter families that move to London. And with that happening, there are more demon attacks for some reasons. And our characters are trying to figure out what is going on. And this obviously continues that, that story. And I gave this five stars. I loved it. This was my second time reading it. I loved it just as much as the first. And I'm currently reading the third as I'm filming this. I'm about a little less than halfway through it. Um, but I really enjoyed this because, again, it's just... I love the Shadowhunter world, so any book within the series I love, and I also love this setting. It's set in 1903, kind of Edwardian London, so it's a vibe that I don't read that often because I'm not really into like historical stuff, but I really like it, and I don't know if it's just because it's like the Shadowhunter books or if I just need to read more things set in that era, um, but I really enjoyed just everything from the characters to the plot to the like time period to the like everything I just loved it so much the next book is Raven's Redemption by Charlie Nottingham and this is a um like adult paranormal uh like why choose um this basically in the first book which is Raven's Cry we follow Rain who ends up being hired by a vampire named Ezra to basically perform like warding spells at this manor um, and she does so because she needs the money, um, and during all of that, she ends up kind of starting to fall for Ezra, but then Ezra also has a husband named Warren, and Rain is also casually in love with her best friend Graham, and there's also this whole thing of there is this like mysterious ghost named Amelia who is contacting Rain, and Rain has no idea why, and so she's trying to figure that out um and so now we are in book four where we're dealing with more of the fey aspect we go to the fey world we're kind of traveling through a couple different realms and we have more gods and goddesses kind of in the story and it is just really good i gave it four stars that's a, that's the highest i could give it just because there was some kind of flat moments where it was just like a okay this has felt like it's dragging on for a little bit but I love it because I just love the character dynamics and the characters themselves are very very unique and I feel like I haven't read that many characters like them before and so I really appreciate that that Charlie Nottingham has such unique characters and, and then the final book that I read in June was Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood which this came out in June and I read it in June but this basically we follow Elsie and Jack and Elsie is basically like an adjunct professor which basically means like she's a professor that has a lot of work but doesn't have a lot of time um, and doesn't get a lot of pay and so she ends up kind of fake dating people for like money as a side gig and so she's been fake dating this guy named Greg for the last like six months for like his family events um insert Jack who is Greg's brother and also a part of the panel of interviewees interviewees that's not the right term but basically Elsie ends up having a job interview with MIT and Jack is on the panel of like people that like she's interviewing with like um if that makes any sense and he's like what the fuck you are with my brother but he didn't mention anything about you working in STEM and it's kind of Jack and Elsie going from there and realizing that maybe they have feelings for each other as they get to know each other and become friends and work together a little bit more um and I love this I went in doubt love everything by Allie Hazelwood I related to Elsie so much because of her constant like need not her constant need for validation but not believing what people say about her I feel that to a T I am like that I'm like some like for example like my boss literally like yesterday 
um, said that she was proud of me for what I did because I helped her train somebody and I was like sitting there like, I wanted to be like, you're fucking lying. Um, so I kind of feel that on a personal level and I love how this features disability rep. Elsie has uh, type 1 diabetes and, and she talks about like her insulin pump and having low blood sugars and all of that. And I love that as somebody who is the child of two people that have type 2 diabetes. So it's a little different, but I've grown up with both my parents being diagnosed with diabetes and seeing how that works. So it was nice to see just any sort of diabetes rep um, in this, which because honestly, that's something that I don't see that often. Like disability rep in books is kind of far and few in between, um, at least for the books that I read. I need to kind of work on expanding that. Um, but I really like this. I gave it five stars and I'm going to continue reading everything that by Allie Hazelwood because, um, I've given three of her books, five stars and one of her books, four stars. So that's pretty good. So yeah, that's all I read. So that's all I read in June, which honestly it was quite a lot, um, especially for June being like the first full month where I was working, like a decent amount like working 20 20 to 26 27 hours a week I think like averaging that throughout the throughout the month so it was quite a lot and then also school work and just life in general so I'm shocked that I was even able to read 12 books I mean look at July I've read like a chapter of a book <laughs> in July so far as I'm filming this and it's the fifth um so Honestly, I'm proud of myself. Um, so yeah, that's what I read in June. Uh, let me know in the comments below what is one book that you read in June. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!